JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 17th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, lower against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session on Tuesday. It lost the most ground versus SEC, NOC, Aussie and Kiwi, while it underperformed the least against the Yen and the Euro. The Greenback act out some gains only versus the Swiss franc and the British pound. The relative weakness in the safe havens dollar, Yen and franc, combined with the strengthening of the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi, suggests uh, that uh, markets continue trading in a risk on uh, fashion. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that a major EU and US indices were a sea of green. That said, investors' uh, appetite softened uh, during the Asian session today. Although Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 gained uh, 0.42%, Hong Kong's Hang Seng traded, uh, is trading virtually unchanged, while China's Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI are, are down 0.21 and 0.15% respectively. The driver behind the further improvement in investors' appetite was uh, headlines that uh, Moderna's coronavirus vaccine was 94.5% uh, effective in preventing coronavirus infections. Moderna is the second uh, drug maker to report promising trial data, following Pfizer last week, which said that its uh, vaccine was more than 90% uh, more than 90% effective. This brings us another step closer in finding the cure for the virus. And although the COVID era is not behind us yet, the more companies reporting promising results with regards to the to their vaccines, the more optimistic investors may be. Thus we, will, uh, thus, we still believe that uh, risk appetite could continue being supported with equities and other risk-linked assets being benefited. At the same time, safe havens like the dollar, the yen and the franc may stay under selling interest. Now, apart from developments surrounding a potential, a potential coronavirus vaccine, overnight, uh, the RPA released the minutes from its latest uh, monetary policy gathering. The minutes confirmed Governor Lowe's remarks that further rate cuts are unlikely, but revealed that officials uh, stay prepared to do more if needed, focusing on uh, bond purchases. Despite the bank's readiness to act again if necessary, the Aussie barely reacted to the minutes, confirming our view that the risk-linked currency will stay mostly driven by developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. Indeed, it was found among the main G10 gainers this morning, and conditional upon uh, more uh, risk on trading, we see the case for a stronger odds in the near term. Now flying from Australia to the UK, although the pound was among the two currencies that lost ground against uh, the US dollar, it was somewhat boosted overnight by reports saying that the UK chief Brexit negotiator David Frost told Prime Minister Johnson to expect a trade deal with the EU early next week. Frost uh, said that he has pinpointed a possible landing zone as soon as uh, next Tuesday, but warned that talks could still collapse. Remember that recently we've been highlighting that the British currency is likely to stay mostly linked to developments surrounding the Brexit landscape, and all this uh, adds uh, credence to our view. Therefore, we will stick to our guns that anything pointing towards an anchor uh, may prove uh, supportive for the pound, while the opposite may be true if news suggests that the two sides are finding it uh, difficult to reach common ground. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, we get the US retail sales and industrial production both for October. 
Both headline and core sales are forecast to have slowed to 0.5% month over month and 0.6% month over month from 1.9% and 1.5% respectively. With regards to the industrial production, it is expected to have rebounded 1% month over month after sliding 0.6%. The American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is also coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for the speakers, we have eight on today's agenda. From the ECB, we have President Christine Lagarde and Vice President Luis de Guindos, while from the Bank of England, we have Governor Andrew Bailey and uh, Monetary Policy Committee member David uh, Ramsden. As uh, for the Fed, we will get to hear from um, uh, from Atlanta, President Rafael Bostic, San Francisco Fed uh, President Mary Daly, and New York President John Williams. Bank of Canada Governor Tiff uh, Macklem will also speak. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.